The pantoprobe is a simple mechanism that amplifies your precision, letting you troubleshoot small electronic components. The design is open source and based on these 3D printed parts. All right, so what do we need to build one of these things? Now, first there are these five 3D printed parts. Then there's some tubing and wire, some washers, this ball joint, a bolt and nut, and some stick-ons, I mean, uh, stick-on feet. Now let's talk about tools. We have sort of two critical tools. There's this file for cleaning up the ends of things and a saw for cutting the tubing. There are also some strictly optional things like some graphite powder, a motor tool, and a deburring tool, but if you don't have that stuff, that's fine. We're gonna start by cutting some of this 3 16 brass tubing. And the lengths that you want to cut are actually, you want them to be about as long as this piece is wide. So it's fairly straightforward to line this up like this and then mark it just like this. So you don't even need any sort of measurement tool. And now we're ready to go cut that over on the vise. After sawing, it's important to deburr the inside and then file to clean up the outside edge. Now we need four of these, one for each of the joints in the pantoprobe, so lather, rinse, repeat. You may be thinking, I have this kind of cutter. That seems like it does a good job. Why can't I use that? But as it turns out, if you cut the tubing with this cutter, you'll discover that it crimps in the edges quite a bit, and that makes it so the tubing no longer nests. So just don't. Next up is cutting four pieces of 7 seconds tubing. This forms the outer cylinder of each of the joints. The exact length isn't critical, but it has to be shorter than these links are wide. If they stick up above the surface, you won't be able to assemble the joint. Now, holding on to these little bits of tubing while you file and deburr them it can be a little tricky. So, one trick I sometimes use is to use some other pieces of tubing to make a little holder. Otherwise, they might escape and hide under the workbench. And with four of these guys cut, we're ready to assemble the joints. In order to put these four pieces of tubing into these holes, we need to deburr the 3D printed parts. The bottoms of these holes tend to close up a little when they're printed, so you have to make sure to remove that material. This is also a good time to remove any sharp edges. Position the tubing with the squarest edge down, then use a series of taps to drive it into the hole. Keep the part level as you tap so the tubing gets pushed in nice and square. We'll start by assembling this main joint. Each joint is made up of this outer bushing, then this inner pin, and then two washers. However, to assemble a joint, you need to push this pin down through the entire stack, which can be a little bit tricky. Before assembling, I apply some of this graphite powder to both faces of the inner link. The graphite can be kind of messy, so don't do this on any surface you care about. I'm doing it on a big piece of cardstock. Then you assemble the joint, but notice how the parts aren't very aligned. I use a small flathead screwdriver to jockey the parts into position. Once the parts are aligned, you can tap the pin down into place. The assembled joint should have no slop and have a very smooth action. It's pretty easy to put the last two links in either upside down or backwards. 
the curved edges should be in the middle. And for the wider link, the part with the shorter prongs is in the middle. Tapping these pins in is by far the hardest part of building the probe. You have to tap down through the top layer of plastic, and then the top washer, and then the link, and then the bottom washer, wiggling and aligning as you go. If you try and do it in just one long straight shot, it doesn't always work. Dang it! You might be tempted to press the pins in with a vise, but as soon as that thin walled tubing hits one of the washers, it will distort and make the final joint really stiff. To mount the quarter 20 nut, let's first deburr the hole with an X-Acto knife. You can tap the nut in, but squeezing it with the vise reduces the chances of splitting. Try and get it to go in square. Now that that's in, let's mount the matching quarter 20 bolt to the base, which means more deburring. Unlike the nut, the bolt sticks out the other side. You can use the sizing gauge to keep it from touching the other vice jaw. Then you just push it in. To keep the base from slipping, mount these three foam rubber stick-on feet. Now all we have to do is mount the ball head and attach the pantograph. Now that we've built the pantograph, let's build a basic probe for it. Start by deburring some 8 inch stainless steel tubing. and cut a length of piano wire. The piano wire forms the thin springy tip of the probe. We'll crimp it into place with a half inch of stick out. I chose stainless steel tubing because it makes a very strong crimp connection. Don't try doing that with aluminum tubing, but it is a bit more annoying to work than brass. I use a piece of tape to keep the wire from wandering off before the crimp is fully formed. Once it's crimped in, I bend the tip over 30 degrees or so. Then I use my moto tool to grind the tip to a blunted angled wedge. As you can see, the probe is one size of tubing too small to fit into the output joint. To remedy that, I cut a piece of aluminum tubing. Aluminum cuts very easily and is kind of soft. After deburring it, I put it over the probe and hammer the end to expand it slightly and lock the tubing into place. I had originally thought that I could epoxy a locking collar onto the output joint to lock the probe into place, but that turned out to be a pain to adjust. I came up with a much simpler solution that's a bit embarrassing to admit. I simply bent the output tubing to make a small lip to drag on the probe's aluminum tube. This makes enough drag to keep the probe in place, but it's still easy to reposition. Because the aluminum's kind of soft, the brass lip can dig in a bit and doesn't wear away super fast. Now let me show you how to use the pantoprobe. It's best to have both hands braced against a surface. Congratulations, you've successfully built a pantoprobe. Everybody probe now. Okay, maybe not.
Why are you hitting yourself? Why?